Hey guys, getting ready to put a trade on and what I'm doing is I'm taking the signal as soon as it clicks down one more and then I'm going to try to make a more efficient trade on this. So super dialed in and I'm going to show you and I'm going to go for six ticks. There it is. Instead of three. It might not get triggered. If it hits that lower line before it goes up and gives me an order, then I'm not doing it. That also means that I can reduce my risk to 62.50. Yep. Yeah. It didn't trigger me, and that sucks. Yeah, I really wanted it to uh, bounce back. I mean, there's no guarantee that the trade will play out, but it's slightly reduce, reduced risk profile. And the win goes from, you know, from $37 to $75, $37.50. So, okay, it put me in. Now, if I win, I'm going to get, before commission, um, 75 bucks, And then it rockets up against me and... Looks like it wants to go the other way. Let's see how long this lasts. So the benefit of this is that I have changed the risk profile. So if I take a loss, then I lose less. If I take a win, then I win more. And so the expected value has drastically changed. The problem is that, well, I would be in either way. I would just be down more than 100. I would be down, you know, well, three more ticks. So, like 37 more dollars. Um, the problem is you never know when a trade's not going to play out. And so we have to sit here and kind of just watch the drama and let the expected value go. Um, I know the math, I've done the research, and I know that taking the trades are necessary. Um, and if you can stack a little bit in your favor, then that's necessary too. So now, it's a waiting game. Because I'm not adding to the position. And that's, so basically uh, from Traders Lab episode six, you could take the initial and try to get that, that three tick scrape that might not pull back or you can say okay out there's fewer trades but if it pulls back then I have a better profile but still the chance of payoff is there which we still have it's just the profile actually changed to be more bullish I feel like this one is going to be a loser um, just by the looking at the candles because it rocketed the other way and now it looks like it wants to go up to this next level here which is going to be right through the stop and this is a thin market so it's being controlled by fewer participants you can tell that it's a thin market if you look at it besides the fact that there's no real news look at all these wicks the more wicks you see, the less participants are actually in the market. Uh, it, it just, it just, that's just how it is. There are different, there are different time periods where the news comes out, and and everything that you have all this volume because people want to move the market. People are taking the the decent bets. There's really no news that's coming out today. There is this week, but nobody wants to place those bets until they actually like get closer. Um, and so you have fewer participants, you have market makers and you have, you know, traders like myself who are trying to just play the math. Um, which is also a rule of thumb, but it's part of the reason why I shifted from taking that initial and kind of changing the risk profile to be more in my favor because the risk is higher in a thinner market. I haven't, fully bought in yet. I haven't seen anything to to make me fully buy into the fact that I should do the mean reversion exclusively today, 
But usually whenever I see Wick City through here, I start to think about mean reversion as an exclusive strategy. And the mean reversion trade, is, it's going to be, I'm going to explain it more in, in Trader's Lab episode 7, which hopefully I can get recorded soon. Um, mean reversion is basically whenever you're just playing, you're fading the market and you're saying, okay, it's going to uh, probably not continue in this direction much longer and then you you place your bet to uh to scrape off a little bit of a scalp in there um but i'm not there yet if it, i haven't seen enough with the market to to make me get there um yet but the more wicks i see and the more um thinner market signs that i see in these candles I'll definitely it performs really well in those types of conditions because they like it likes to uh, basically what people do it, traders tend when there's nothing else going on traders tend to want to create a range see right here I could take the profit because um, I don't know that this even wants to make a new low I think this wants to just be range bound But that's not the system that I have, right? Okay, trade the system and it pays off. This is a $69 better risk profile um, approach. Very dramatic. <laughs> we did dig into a new low and the new signal has to come when I see it pull back to the average line, the basis, uh, which is that middle line there. And the thing that I'm looking for now is, um, did you, here, here's another point. Did you see that it triggered this and then rocketed up to test this so it could go right back down? That to me, that's a thin market. That's an identity of a thin market right there because people are playing the extremes. Um, and one of the things that you wanna be careful of is even with mean reversion in this market, um, what's going to happen is it with fewer participants than the people who need to move the market in certain ways have more ability to do so. And so they can clear order books. And basically um, what it looks like is it and we'll see if this is going to stick with the direction because it, it kind of looks like it wants to. But what it looks like on clearing the order books is that I would put a mean reversion strategy betting that it's going to not go down too much and it will come down and it will just rock it down and that'll stop me out on this and then it'll rock it back up to this level here and anybody who was playing the ranges will get cleared out and usually if you're playing the ranges it's not a 50 50 strategy you're not you're not going for three ticks and risking three you usually have you know your losses are stacked a little bit bigger uh, to give the market room to flex. So whenever it clears the order book, those or you you lose an accumulation of a few orders that you had won, and it takes the money back from you on the mean reversion in a thin market. Um, that is the risk, but you know it is what it is if you're trying to make money out of these thin candle sort of markets. Um, Let's see. But yeah, I think the key of this video, before I make it too long, the key of this video is that I am, I'm trading the market. I still know the statistics. I still know that, that overall, anytime during the day, if it gets hit, it's, it's a 92, roughly a 92% chance of success that I'm gonna get three ticks over it's just different markets give me different profiles and this market allows me to say okay i think there might be more battles more drama and so i could go in and i could say i want to take the first order for three ticks and then i'll add a contract which increases my risk um, even though it does it does give me a better overall profile but it increases the risk and so the next thing you can do is skip that first contract and use that as a signal 
And if you're using that as a signal, then basically what you do is you see that it gets hit, but it hasn't cleared three ticks yet. So it's a live trade. And then you can bring in and you can, you can make your, in this case, short, um, you can make your short position at a more at a advantageous. You keep your stop where the stop would be on the original trade. So originally you would risk 300 and, and then you make your short better. And so you're risking less. In my case, I brought my risk from 300 down to 262. Um, and then I went for twice as much. So now the, the profile was lose 92% chance, but lose 262 versus winning 75. And then you deal with commissions in there. Um, which is a much better profile. And that way, if you end up taking a loss on your 92% chance of success trade, you're taking a smaller loss. But if you get the win, then you can get, see, you know, I'm, I'm, this doesn't look like a breakout to me the way that this is acting. It looks like it wants to go up and hit this range and look like it wants to break out, but then pull right back. Um, Yeah. Let's see what kind of market this actually is. Switch the account that I'm trading so I can spread the risk through accounts, which is something else I'll talk about in another video. Hmm. Yeah, that's. I don't know. I don't I don't particularly care for the up signal. It's all the way down, stopped out here, stopped out, tested, went down, reversed, which I kind of suspected that it would do that. This doesn't have the look of a bottoming market. Like it wants to turn around. It has the look of a market that is just all over the place. Do you see the, the wicks that this, um, yeah. And then what that looks like is it wants to hit the top. All right, 50, one, two, three. So that would have cleared on the, on the top side. It wouldn't surprise me if it just next candle pulls back to like right here, which once this is already clear. So once this, tr this trade has hit three ticks and so it's cleared out. So the statistics are not existing anymore. Um, it only exists when it hits the line, but, but before it hits three straight ticks. So this is one of those trades that would have taken and won at the same time with the first trade, which in this market is too risky for me to trade. So I don't, um, I'm okay missing that because I think that, I think that it was just, it's trying to give us a posture. And it might stretch up another few ticks, but I would be willing to bet that it wants to pull back and get back into this area and then do a battle. And I don't know, it might look like it wants to drift a little higher after this. Um, but I would think that you'd, you'd probably be able to get something down here. Well, one or two ticks up. Either way, we have a wall right here, a quick wall. Yeah. That would have been a good trade though. Well, for the market, it would have been a little bit too risky. But we, we never got the pullback to get in, which is unfortunate. But even at the same time, looking at all of this, it's okay to miss trades, guys. It's okay to it's okay to sit on the sidelines when you don't see something that's set up 
the way that you wanted like especially on reversals where a market has has fallen and let me get the auto on there when you see this and then you see all of this chop down here that might be the new low but we haven't even come back to test it yet Let's see if we get back to the 4,600 that I think that we probably should pull back to. See, there, what do you do with that? I still think that the market wants to get back into this channel, but it is tilting bullish at this point. And you can see that because the, uh, I'm trying to point to the screen, but you guys are over here. The widening Bollinger Bands on the bullish side means that basically if uh, if what we see here can come here and then coil up and move higher then we've gone into you know a possible bullish stance but with with the way the candles look I'm not I'm not there yet yeah but Nonetheless, this is a choppy market. Um, I don't think I'm going to keep you around much longer to watch. Possible, because I have to filter out some of these trades. There's just not a lot of good trades, and then I filter them out, and you guys will be wasting your time at this point. So I think, besides, most people are going to just skip right to the trade and then close off because people's attention spans are about 15 seconds now. Uh, but if you made it this long, hopefully you learned a little bit of something on how I trade and a little bit on how I filter out and also how you can adjust the system to work around, know the probabilities, and then adjust your risk around what the market is telling you because the probabilities will define something in all markets but your risk changes market to market. And so there's nothing wrong with changing how you play around those risk knowledge points, we'll call them. That's actually the hit on the blue line here was a knowledge point of a 92% chance of success. And that closed quickly. I had a knowledge point down here and that took a lot or down here and that took a lot longer to close. But I had a knowledge point I traded it, I, I adjusted my risk to the market, and it ended up being a winning trade even though dramatic, because statistics are what they are. Losses will happen, but majority of the time they're going to play out the way that they should play out. So there's that battle. Anyway, um, yeah, short session today because this is one of those choppy markets, but the news is going to pick up this week. Uh, CPI and PPI come out this week. Um, I will be trading those lottery ticket trades. If you've seen my last video, then it was a two minute video. And what, what happened? I got, a, a, I got a couple of dislikes on there too. And I think that people don't understand that if you are trading an evaluation account, your risk is only your reset fee, but your reward is being funded or nearly funded. I made over $1,400 on that trade. And at the time, my risk was only $35 for reset on an account that had 25,000 to begin with. So your risk reward is real world payment versus getting funded very, very quickly. And you can trade PPI and CPI and and these big events that you can't trade on an elite account. So it's, it's like, a, for me, the way that I view it is the lottery ticket on those things are like fast lanes for funding and sometimes there's a car crash. So I'm doing it and the people that don't understand that my risk profile actually makes sense I don't know what to say. Hopefully you understand now if you're watching this video. If you don't, comment below and maybe I can help you get there. I would never trade pass fail on an elite account because that's real money. But when you're playing with fake money to get funded, you have to think differently. And hopefully that's what I can bring to the table on this channel. 
None of this is financial advice. I will talk to you guys later.